It was the Monday after Thanksgiving. I was 24 years old, and it was the first Thanksgiving I didn't get to go home. Neither of my sisters made it home either, so it was kind of unusual. I'd gotten into the office at 7 a.m. At 7.10, the phone rang. I grabbed it. It was Eleanor, a friend of my mother's. She said, your mother's collapsed. She's in New York. You need to get up here immediately. Please let your sisters know. I didn't ask any questions. I simply called both sisters, walked them through what they needed to do, both on the West Coast. I was on the East Coast. And I made plans to get up to New York as quickly as possible. At the time, I was a purchasing agent at the Radisson Hotel in Charlotte, North Carolina. I have a degree from Cornell in hotel and restaurant management. It's a great <laughs> systems background. So I was used to early mornings. I wasn't used to this kind of surprise. I was up in New York four hours later. I went to the hospital immediately, met with the doctor. He was very frank with me, something I think that's rare in the medical profession. He said, your mother's had a brain aneurysm. There is no hope. At 24 years old, when your mother's 62, you don't really expect to hear that. The funny part about it is, some of you in this room probably know who my mother is. That's my mother. Eve in All About Eve, playing with Betty Davis. Princess Nefertiri in the Ten Commandments, in love with Charlton Heston as Moses, forced to marry Yul Brynner as Ramses. I still remember mother complaining that she had to carry the dead boy in her arms, because my mother was a little bitty thing. And during all of this, mother had been filming the TV series Hotel while I was in hotel school. <laughs> Irony there, huh? And that was her big dream for me. Well, the doctor was right. Two weeks later, on December 12th, we stopped life support. She never came to. She wasn't in any pain that we were aware of. They had to run the tests. They had to announce on the nightly news, actress Ann Baxter in a coma. The big takeaways didn't happen for me for five years. The first one, was do what you love and the money will follow. And I quit my career path in hotel purchasing. And I went back to school for a degree in design and hit the ground running with a full-time job in design. The second involves time. Because what I realized is that when we're born, we get that birth certificate. It doesn't have an expiration date. We have no idea when time is going to run out on us. We're guaranteed no more than the moment we're standing in. My mother was walking, and I know my mother race walking, to the hairdresser that morning when she collapsed on the street out of the sheer blue. She had a little bit of high blood pressure. Otherwise, she was in great shape. And she was one of these people who always lived at 120%. So I looked at that and I thought, wow, I need to restructure how I'm living because I have this new sense of urgency. And I leapt into my new career path. Now, how many of you have leapt into design? I see a show of hands. Yeah. OK, the challenge with leaping like that is we have all this ignition, all this fuel, and we go full out and we forget about something called burnout. It kicked in at about five years for me and I had to make a bunch of changes. But in order for me to juggle with one intern, 40 clients, I needed serious time structure. And that's what I'm going to today. It worked for me then. It works for me now. It works for all of the designers I coach. And it will work for you when you apply it. Now, there's something really important about this. You can't really manage time. You can only manage your behavior 
around time. So a lot of this is up here. And a lot of you are going to resist what I'm teaching you today. You're going to need to have me teach this to you three, four, or five more times before you go, oh, light bulb moment, I'm just going to do it, and it's going to work. Because it does. It truly does. It makes a big, big difference. So I've got some gifts for you. Are gifts OK? OK. I think we're having a little bit of an issue, because I work in PowerPoint, and the lovely Francisca, who loaned me her laptop, works in Mac. So we might have slide issues. You'll get the gifts regardless. You do not need to screenshot. I want your attention on learning. I want your attention on it being engaged and fully present. I promise to send you the slides. And I've got a tip sheet, time mastery. I've got a tip sheet on first class client care. And you've got an opportunity for 30 days of accountability, which to me is the best way I can jumpstart you into time mastery. Everybody okay with all of that? Yeah? Okay, super. So what is a successful business? And this is a definition that I took away from watching my mother. Because my mother was a success, but there was also a very large sacrifice. My mother's number one priority was her career. She was in love with acting and writing because she wrote a book. She had a second book that would have been finished had she not died. The book is called Intermission. If any of you are curious, you can usually pick up a, a used copy on Amazon. It's a phenomenal book about her life in Australia with my father. I learned things I never wanted to know about my parents. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want your mother writing a tell-all. And she did a beautiful job. It's got the, the, the Aussie, Aussie accent written throughout it. And I actually, a couple years ago, got to go back to Australia a woman found me on Facebook. She and her late husband own the ranch that my parents owned that I was taken back to. I was born in California and taken back for 15 months. And she, I went back on my 56th birthday. It was the coolest experience ever. So amazing things can happen. Um, but for me and for the designers I coach, and I'm hoping for you, you'll agree with me that a successful business, design or any other pursuit, is one that informs and inspires, serves and supports and fuels and feeds all of your life. It doesn't swallow you whole. Now, I don't care how much money you make. I don't use that as a metric of success. And the reason I don't is because I was making fantastic money year two, year three, year four, year five. I had zero time, zero time. And it wasn't until I did some restructuring and added team, changed the way I did things, that I actually reclaimed time and started taking vacations, cut my workload from 70 hours a week to more like 40 hours a week. And I changed how I did everything. So that's what we're going to discuss today and what you'll learn. Now, in addition, you're going to learn how to get more done in less time more effectively. I want you to give up the badge of busy. Some of you are wearing a busy badge on your sleeve. You don't get rewards for busy badges. I can see them. I hear a lot, oh, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. <laughs> There's no reward for that, OK? And the funny thing is we all have the same number of hours in a day, and yet we all know people who are getting three times as much done and yet look relaxed about it. Now, if any of you saw me when I first came in here, I get a little stressed out before I step up here. I get a little frantic. I'm like, oh, and then there's technology. Oh, technology. <laughs> OK, so I have to remind myself continually to take a deep breath, to step back from that edge. OK, I am by no means perfect in this. The three components of project management that will make you a master of time. I distilled project management, which has 25 pieces, down to three. I want to make things simple. I can't promise easy. I can promise simple. How to include client celebrations. When you keep your clients celebrating along the path of whether it's simply a redesign or a full-blown renovation or remodel, makes all the difference in the world. Because clients get frustrated. If you've never been through your own renovation or remodel, you have no idea what that's like. And I've seen a couple of eye rolls, so a couple of you have. Yeah, me too. OK, I wouldn't do it to myself again. I would move out. 
It's that simple. So the almost free tool, I love almost free tools, that turns you into a scheduling ninja, if you'll use it. None of this stuff works if you don't use it. And how to eliminate management by crisis, client frustration, and digital distraction. So when you manage your behavior, you control the action in your hours, you'll take charge of your day. Take charge of your days and your week will be productive. Productive, not busy. Productive. Productive weeks lead to profitable months. Profitable months mean years of business growth, income and impact you want, and the life that you've dreamt of. You cannot run a business without being time conscious and time smart. And that's what we're doing today. Now, the first thing I want to share with you is time blocking. You may have heard of this. I make this incredibly simple, and I use a really special tool. It's called a Google Calendar. <laughs> Thinking all of y'all have access to that, right? Nobody can say I can't access my Google Calendar, right? Nobody can say it's expensive. I don't want to buy. Okay, so we've jumped hurdle number one. Categorize your activities. Now I have four categories here. Okay, and I'm going to walk you through each one of these so you'll know what I put in these categories. If you want to have 10 categories, you can do that. I don't recommend it because it's complicating things. And I want you to keep things simple. Okay? So let's look at what these categories are personal care, business building, which encompasses marketing, design, delivery, admin, and prep. So here for me is personal care. Now, this is, these are categories that I structure a 60 hour work week because I consider personal care to be an essential piece of my work week. Okay, so that 60 hours encompasses that. It's not outside of that. Exercise, anybody here exercise? Yeah, I got any fellow spinners in the room, bike spinners? Yes, okay. Uh, yoga, okay, excellent. Meditation, yeah. <laughs> Pipe down you. Pipe, seriously, pipe down. <laughs> journaling. Anybody do any journaling? Okay. Spa time? <laughs> or want to have spa time? How many of you want to have spa time? Okay. Devotional reading. Okay. Bathing. <laughs> this is scaring me, you guys. Not every hand is going up. I'm <laughs> Some people aren't bathing. How about dressing? Everybody looks fully clothed today. Okay. Eating? Eating? Okay, I know we're prone to skipping some of these things, especially the eating part. And you know what? When you skip the eating, you pack on weight. Funny, it doesn't work the other way around. It should. I'm thinking, wait, I skipped breakfast, I skipped lunch. Okay, so I had a big dinner. Why am I gaining weight? Okay, so you can't skip these. So you can put your own categories in if you want, but I wanted to give you a head start on this. So let's look at business building, social media. Oh my gosh, we could be here for 25 slides. Okay, it's monster. Here's the key to social media. You do not need to be on every platform. You need to master one platform at a time. For most of us, it's IG. Okay? Now, if you follow me on IG, and it's just at Melissa Galt, you will see a lot of business building marketing tips because my IG is geared towards you. I'm not there to develop client relationships. Okay? Master one at a time, then pick up a second. That's really where you need to end. Most of you don't need to be on Twitter unless you can tell me you're getting clients from it. Okay? Pinterest is good for you if it's strategically done. None of these platforms work without strategy. If you're just doing random posts, once every three months I post on Instagram. No, 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 not effective. If you're doing Instagram posts and no stories, not effective. Not effective, okay? Photography. Photography is an essential, an integral part of our businesses. You have to put it into every project. If you aren't photographing your projects, why did you do them? Some of you, that's a wake-up call. Some of you are picking up business you're not proud of. Rethink that. You have a choice in saying no. Networking, 
How many people love networking? Ooh, yes, can't wait. Love networking. We have two hands, three hands. <laughs> That's brilliant. I love that. Okay, so here's the thing. Networking doesn't have to be icky and awful. I can do a whole separate training on that at some point in time. But it is a part of marketing for many people. And at the very least, IG is a form of networking. It's supposed to be engagement. You're not just supposed to throw posts up there and then run away. Okay? Um, blogging. Anybody here blog? How many bloggers I got in the room? Yeah. Okay. By the way, blogging you're only really a blogger if you blog minimum once a month, preferably bi-weekly. If you're doing it randomly once every three or four months, you're not a blogger, okay? Newsletter, anybody have a newsletter they send out? Wow, only a couple of hands, holy smokes. Okay, fascinating, super helpful. Um, design delivery, this is the part we all love to do, generally, except, except for that second one, contractor management. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'd like to have a contract manager, wouldn't we? Yeah. Okay, so client meetings. I think just about everybody I know, all the designers I work with, all love their client one-on-one -on -one time. Okay. Contractor management is just a necessary evil. Uh, sourcing materials and finishes. Most of us really love that. If you don't, make sure you put a star next to it because that means it's something you need to outsource. You can get interns and assistants that love to do that. And they can do it in person and they can do it online. So key pieces to this while we're walking through this, I want you noticing what lights you up, you get to keep doing that. What are you really good at, but you're like, oh, no, I have to do that again? <laughs> Delegate it. Get it off your plate. There's no reward to just beating your chest saying, I can do it all, I can do it all. There's no reward in that. It's goofy. And many of us have done that for many years. Stop. Okay. Um, project management. Sometimes you love that. Sometimes you hate it. Sometimes it's a good thing to outsource. Good thing to outsource. And installation coordination and supervision. I've outsourced that. I'll sweep in in that last hour of a four to six hour install, tweak a few things, and look like the rock star. That's what team's for. Okay. You don't have to be there the whole time. You're the visionary. I want every single one of you to say with me right now, I am the CEO of my design practice. Say it with me. I am the CEO of my design practice. A lot of you are not CEOs. You're chief employees, and you're wearing every hat imaginable. And it's hard, and it's going to wear you out. Been there, did that. Okay. Admin and preparation. This is stuff we love to do. Ooh, it's so much fun. I can hardly stand it. Bookkeeping. Studio webware. No longer studio. Now it's studio designer. I Doma, QuickBooks, revenue tracking, expen expense tracking, established metrics. <gasps> no, Melissa, I can't do that. Yes. And if you don't do it, you need somebody to do it for you. I am regularly referring interior design bookkeepers to the designers I coach, to the designers in my Facebook group. You vet them. That's not my job. You vet them. But they are qualified. They know Ivy. They know Studio Designer. Most of them don't know my Doma, but my Doma is on top of all that anyway. A couple of them might know Designer Advantage. You find the one that works for you. Get it outsourced now. Make that your goal before the end of the year to outsource your bookkeeping. Uh, even if you have an accounting background and you used to be a rock star at accounting, you got into design because you didn't want to start accounting. Okay? I've got a client who came out of an accounting finance background, and she gave it up. She said, no, I hired it out. It took me about nine months to convince her. She was very resistant. She goes, oh, I can do that better myself. I said, no. No, that's not where your heart is. It's your head. It's your skill set. That's not what, what lights you up. So being the CEO means you're in your zone of genius 80% of the time. 80% of the time. Or higher. Higher, okay? Um, assign your days. This really works well. Monday, office day. Tuesday, clients and design. Wednesday, install and sourcing. Now, your installs may not always fall on a Wednesday. You may have to joggle things around a bit. Thursday, clients and design. Friday, catch up and loose ends. The reason 
I do this, and the reason this works is because it eliminates unnecessary decisions. We all have so many decisions to make around our projects, which are so much more important than around our time management, that if you make this decision at the front of the week, it changes everything. So let me show you what this looks like. Okay. Does that look scary? Four colors. Now again, if you pick 10 colors, it's going to get a little busy. Okay. <laughs> Categories, 10 colors. So what I did is, in the purple I've got the personal care. The green is all billable. Now, if you're not billing hours, that's totally fine. Some of you may be on fixed fee. You still need to be tracking your hours to a, a degree so you make sure your fixed fee is covering you. Okay. How many hourlies do I have in the room? I see a show of hands. Still got a fair number of hourlies in the room. And you fix fees know how to make this work. Okay. Um, I've got one. That one should have been a different color down there. Shame on me. Um, but you all see how this works. The, the most exciting part to me is looking at all the because the green is all billable. Okay. Now, I believe in billing project management wholeheartedly. That's not my expense. And that includes some bookkeeping. Bookkeeping per project. That's project management. Does anybody have a problem with that? I didn't think so. A lot of you are going to be picking up a lot more hours. There's an interesting little exercise. If write down the number of hours that you worked, you think you worked, last month, then look at the numbers, uh, number of hours you billed. How big is the gap? <laughs> I did this with a client not that long ago. She was off by two to three times. Wow. And she wondered why she wasn't making more money. I said, oh, I can tell you why you're not making more money, because you told me you're working this kind of hours, but you're billing this. Something's really not working here. So you've got to get very clear on, on billing your hours. OK, now. Can I just ask a question? Uh-huh. Where am I here? Yeah, this is, this is about setting up your whole week in advance. I have week in review and week in success. OK, so that's either meeting with yourself or meeting with team to get everybody kicked off and on the same page. Now, if you can do that on a daily basis, but not everybody can do that. OK? So how many of your working hours per week are billable? Let me hear some numbers here. 60%. That's a nice high number. Thank you. I appreciate that because I've heard as low as 10%. So anybody have any numbers they want to share? Everybody 60%? Yeah, I didn't think so. Yeah, I don't know. OK. Do you think it'd be good to know? Yeah. Okay, is that something you're willing to look at before the end of, I won't say the end of this week, the end of next week? Yeah. Okay, it's probably going to be a scary discovery, but here's, here's what's really important. When you do discover it, please don't beat yourself up. Please don't put yourself up in shame mode. It will not move you forward. You will just feel worse, you will spiral, you'll get depressed. Say it's all Melissa's fault. <laughs> no, instead, what I want you to do seriously, I want you to be accountable, and I want you to shoot that to me in your accountability on the Friday. And, and I will do a boost and say, hey, the best thing is you've got to work it. You can't be willing to look at it. And a lot of creatives and designers like to put their head in the sands. And you know what happens when you put your head in the sand? Something else goes up in the air. Okay, so it's true, just telling you. So this is a 60 hour week based on the chart that I showed you, okay? 15% personal care, you gotta take care of you first. If you don't care, take care of you, you're not gonna be available to take care of your clients. You're not, okay? Or your family, so you first. Admin, 5%. 
Now, I say 5% because that's as much as I want you doing it. I want the rest of it being taken care of by someone outside of you, okay? Marketing 15%. You didn't know you were doing marketing 15% each week, did you? You were thinking, no, I'll do that when I need to. Marketing doesn't work that way. Marketing needs to be ongoing, okay? And billable 65%. Sir, you're right on target. Well done. That's very rare. So I, I don't have anything unrealistic like 100% up there. It's not realistic. But this is a 60-hour week. Nine marketing hours. How many hours are most of you spending on marketing? Let me hear some numbers. Per week? Yeah, per week. And ra rabbit holes, rabbit holes on Facebook does not count. <laughs> okay? This has to be focused, dedicated. I'm here 30 minutes to do my Instagram posts. I'm going to do my Instagram stories. I'm going to be on Facebook and strategic about it. I'm going to go to a networking event. I'm going to go to some other type of event, whatever it is. I'm going to go speak at, at the HOA. Okay? I'm going to go um, put my yard signs out at my projects. Yeah, that's marketing. Okay? How many hours? Somebody give me a number. Somebody from this side of the room. Four. Okay. Anybody else got a number? Six. You're going to get more marketing done this way. I mean, basically my marketing is, let's see, five days a week, about an hour a day, and then I do maybe three hours at the weekend, or I'll do three hours on a Friday or a Monday. It just works really well for me that way. But if you're not doing something to grow your business every single day, you're missing out. Or if you're waiting until you have a lull in projects and then you're like in this panic and then that roller coaster, oh, that darn roller coaster kicks in. Roller coaster sucks. Okay. So what do you want to do with your time? If I gave you five hours a week, just a gift, here's five extra hours a week, what would you do with it? Do you know? Sleep. Sleep. <laughs> okay. Okay. I didn't put sleep in here. I just assumed there were at least eight hours a night in here on sleep. Okay. Anybody have an answer other than sleep? Cook. Okay. Read. You go party. Excellent. Okay. I like it. You, you, you need to get together on the party front. Okay. So here's what I do with my time. Okay. I love to do this, what I'm doing right now. And I do it all over the country. I love business transformation. My favorite business transformation is this, but also the small group. Because then I get to dive deeply into people's businesses. That's a lot of fun for me. And what happens is the results look like Kim got. Kim came to me. She does a lot of high-end luxury bill design. So she'll start at the ground with a client, two years later deliver the home. The tricky part is, like all of us, Kim has her zone of genius and her favorite pieces. Now, her zone of genius and her favorite pieces happen to be the architectural details, the space planning, the finished selections, working with the builder, and dealing with the contractor. That's a little unusual. You know what Kim hates? She hates the decorative pieces. She hates having to deal with upholstery, having to deal with fabric, having to deal with drapery, lamps, rugs, artwork. <laughs> She hates that stuff. Now, it doesn't hate it vehemently, but she just really doesn't enjoy it. And so what happens is she didn't, before we started working together, she didn't put deadlines on her projects. So what would happen is she'd get about 85% done. The client would say, oh, Kim, we so love what you've created for us. We're so thrilled. You know what? We're going to take care of that rug. Don't worry about it. Kim, we're going to get that last lamp. Don't worry about it. <gasps> she was losing referrals because she was too embarrassed. She couldn't get projects photographed because they weren't really finished to her specification. It was a huge problem. And we put her into time blocking and timeline process, which I'm going to give you in a moment. And it transformed her business. She was also working 60 to 70 hours a week. She was starting her day early, kids off to school, diving into the business, home for dinner, and then 8 o'clock to 11 or 12 o'clock at night. Was it viable? wasn't viable, okay? And her husband was helping her in the business on top of his full-time job. She needed more team, okay?
not getting support at home that you need, you might want to look at how much time you're giving to your partner or your spouse. And if you're not giving them enough time, you need to schedule that time in. Because you need the support, their support, in order to get it, you have to give. Okay? And I get to do fun stuff. Remember those five years? I didn't have any fun those five years. I was a crazy woman those five years. But now, I'm a crazy woman doing fun stuff. <laughs> it works out really well. Okay? I love what I do. There's nothing more fun. And I've gotten some incredibly cool opportunities. Yes, that is a live baby panda in China on my lap, eating a piece of bamboo. This is me with my great-grandfather in bronze, Frank Lloyd Wright. Some of you probably know that name. That's my mother's grandfather. Um, you, now you've met two of the family. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, we got to sit test bathtubs. I won't do mattresses for clients, but I'll do bathtubs for clients. And, and I'm always looking for my flock. What can I say? So now you a little more, <laughs> now you know a little bit more about me. So timeline process. This is basic, but most of you aren't doing it. When you get a project, start with the end in mind. How many of you are working with deadlines? That is not enough hands. That is not enough hands, <laughs> OK? Every single one of you, the first thing you need to do with a client is get a deadline. Create a deadline. You must have a deadline. I don't care if you create it out of thin air. I'd rather you created it out of something relevant to the client. Uh, so relevant to the client could be a birthday, an anniversary, a uh, mother-in-law coming to visit, the Christmas holidays are coming up, Thanksgiving is coming up, Yom Kippur. Is that behind <laughs> us or in front of us? It's behind us, sorry. Hanukkah. Okay, now I get the right set of holidays going on. Okay, so it's really important. If you have to say it's the third Tuesday of February and we're going to be complete with your project, okay, come up with a deadline. First of all, a deadline means you make more money in less time. I know every single person in this room has had projects without a deadline that just dragged on and on and on. And the other reason you want to have a deadline is because... It forces clients to make decisions. This wandering around, checking with the neighbor, checking with their sister Susie, checking with who, goodness knows who else, can't happen. Put it in your letter of agreement. I only work with rapid decision makers. I literally had an agreement out for a project with a potential client this last week. She promised me she was going to sign it and do the deposit and all. And, and it just started dragging. I was like, nope. I emailed her and I said, I'm so sorry. I'm booked now. Unable to take you. And she came back and said, oh, we were on fall break. Not my problem. She had shown me how she made decisions, which was not speedy enough for me. And I very politely said, I'm sorry. Go find somebody else. And I was really nice about it. <laughs> like, you know, she's showing me who she is. She's showing me who she is. Don't do this. Okay? You have a choice who you work with. Exercise that judgment. Okay, so deadline is imperative. Establish essential milestones. Every project's going to have milestones. I don't care if you're doing somebody's bedroom. There are still milestones. Milestone might be the new carpet will be in, and the paint will be up on the wall, and the new light fixture. And then the next milestone will be the furniture will be in. And then the next milestone is the bedding. And then the next milestone is, is the accessories and accent pieces and the big reveal. There's milestones in every project. Yeah, it's easier to have milestones when you have a renovation or a remodel. I get that. But you need milestones. And you need your milestones to be evident to your client. OK? Let them know what the milestones are. Include wiggle room. OK? We all know stuff happens. Now, you don't let the client know you've included wiggle room, by the way. OK? You just put in a category like, finishing touches and give it two weeks. Or you t say tile selection and you give it an extra week. You know it's going to take you two days, but you give it a full five. Okay? They don't need to know about the wiggle room because you're going to need that somewhere in the project. You never let your contractor know there's wiggle room either because he's going to steal it from you if he knows. Okay? False deadlines with contractors are invaluable. They truly are. 
Um, Got to include wiggle room. Incorporate celebrations. And I'm going to walk you through what I mean by celebrations in a little bit. But you've got to include cel the reason you have milestones is so you can have celebrations. Make this easy. I don't want you thinking, oh, gosh, OK, we're week three in. I need to come up with something to celebrate. That's too hard. Off your plate. I want this done in advance. So you like step into every project knowing exactly the timeline, the deadline, where those celebrations are, and they're all queued up, ready to go. How awesome is that? You could have an assistant or a virtual assistant do a lot of this for you. Okay? Internal for contractor use, I have to confess. He's not as blue-eyed as he was in my original slide. He's really very attractive. That's why I put him in here. Um, <laughs> but, you need two timelines, and I'll show you what the timeline looks like. You need one, well, actually three. You need one for your internal use with a contractor, and you're going to strip a couple things out, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. You need one for your clients. I want you giving your clients timelines. Shocker. Anybody here ever work with a contractor, ever asked them for a timeline and ever gotten one? How irritating is it that you, you can bet? Plead down on bended knee, buying him cases of beer, and he's still not giving you a timeline? Doesn't work, does it? So imagine how delighted and surprised your client will be when you actually hand them a timeline. They'll be like, oh, we have a timeline. It's not an indefinite project. They've not become a part of our family for the next six years or six months. By the way, I work on 90-day timelines, and the reason I do that is because that's the honeymoon period with people. You can go Google this. It is a honeymoon period. Everybody's good till about 90 days, and then they start going, oh, oh, oh. So if you have the ability to get it out in 90 days, do it. And there are a lot of express ship programs you can leverage to do that. Client version to show who's in charge. The client's not in charge. If you let your client be in charge of your project, you are being whipped around. I go by the tail. Miserable stuff. You show your client who's in charge by giving them your timeline and saying, this is the timeline we're going to be working on for you. You don't say, is it OK? Can we do this? You say, this is what we're doing. Well, maybe don't hit your hands like that. But <laughs> <laughs> I've never had anybody argue with me on this, OK? So Alexa was wandering all over the place. She was listening to a lot of advice from a lot of different sources, which is totally fine. But the problem is she was getting confused. She was feeling depressed. She lost a lot of confidence. She had a gorgeous Instagram feed when I met her. I was amazed. I was like, but your Instagram feed looks so good. <laughs> she was faking how she felt on Instagram. And when she, I finally got her focused, channeled in, and gave her the real deal and the strategies and advice that she needed, she took a major leap forward. And it was the neat thing to see. And to see her go from doing e-design to doing real-time design to doing a large project in Texas and still doing the e-design because she loves it, not because she has to do it. There are those designers that love e-design, and some of you may be those designers, and I totally respect that. And then there are other designers that hate e-design, and they're doing it because they think they have to. So it's not the only game in town. But obviously, I'm unfiltered in my advice <laughs> and my guidance. I mean, I don't want to waste anybody's time, mine or yours. So the three components of project management, calendar it. I cannot impress upon you the importance of this. Between deadlines, timelines, milestones, calendar it. If you want to use an old-fashioned paper calendar, phenomenal. Use what works for you. Don't get caught up in the digital, I got to do it this way, I got to do it this way. I use the Google Calendar because it's easy. But personally, I found that big old whiteboards, whiteboard calendars work profoundly well. We are high visuals. We need to see this morning, noon, night. If you have to open up a device to see it, you're going to miss stuff. Now, some of you might be swank enough that you're going to have some sort of cool electronic whiteboard that comes up and maybe has neon elements that will glow at you telling you where the deadlines are. So many things we could do with that. So many things. Communicate it. You must communicate it. Communicate it to your contractors. Communicate it to your trade partners. Universal is a phenomenal trade partner. Okay, They take amazing care of you. And that's what you want in a trade partner. 
You want to let them know your deadlines. The moment you get a project, you should be on the phone with your trade partner saying, hey, just landed this project. Here's our deadline. You can back it up by a couple weeks if you want to. Okay. Here's the style we're working in. Here's the price point we're at. Here's the scale and proportion. I'm going to need the following pieces. Get them to work for you. They know their lines way better than we could ever hope to. We're supposed to know a million lines. They know one. Way easier. And you don't have to pay them benefits or pay them hourly. Okay? You have to treat them well. Buy them an occasional pizza. Send them a box of Godiva chocolates. Maybe some flowers. Or a bottle of champagne. It works. Complete it. Uh-oh. Um, you've got to complete. I hate to say this, but our industry is known for incompletions. Our industry is known for leaving loose ends. It is an ugly thing to be known for. There's nothing worse. We have all been stood up by contractors, I guarantee it. We've all had contractors go blind on us, disappear, even leave their, I had painters once leave their equipment and just abandon their equipment. I'm like, those ladders had to cost a bunch of money. I'm confused. Okay? And hadn't been paid. It wasn't like they'd been paid. They hadn't. So we don't want to be that. Okay? We are finishers. As creatives, we are maverick starters. Finishing is what we do the least well. If you can find a finisher, a finisher, by the way, can finish 10 starters. A good finisher can finish 10 starters. Find a finisher, hire that finisher, get that finisher as an assistant, get that finisher as an intern to move into an assistant position. You don't need any more starters in your business. You're the starter. You're the ignition. You're the visionary. You really need to complete it. So first class celebrations. Always ask. Are these questions you're asking? Are these in your intake form? Milk, dark, or white? Let me tell you something. I only eat dark chocolate. I will turn back milk or white. I really will. You can bring it over from France. I don't care. <laughs> and, and by the way, I do like dark French chocolate. Um, <laughs> just letting you know. Red, white, or bubbly, or not at all. Now, I'm a cocktail gal, personally. I kind of steer clear of the red, white, and bubbly. Um, sweet or unsweet? I'm an unsweet. This is only in the South. You're not going to use that on any other coast, OK? <laughs> you all know what I mean when I say sweet and unsweet, right? OK, good. Tea, coffee, or hot chocolate? I am tea only. I don't drink coffee. I get insulted when somebody gives me a Starbucks card. I know they have that tea stuff there, but it's not really tea. It's colored water, and it tastes weird. OK? So tea, coffee, and I do like hot chocolate, but it has to be dark hot chocolate, not milk hot chocolate. <laughs> flat or sparkling? I'm strictly flat. I don't do sparkling. The bubbles bother me. OK? So I'm, I'm particular. I look at my life and my preferences, and I go, wait a minute. I need to find these out about my client. And you know what? When you start asking questions like this, or you put them on a, on a nice client intake, they go, why does she need to know that? Why did he ask that? What? How, how, how come I did? Oh, I got some celebrations planned for you. Or I've got some surprises up my sleeve. And they go, oh, OK. They get excited, all right? Bath remodels, favorite scent. I got a client who can't do scents at all. I mean, really not at all. She's allergic. So it has to be completely unscented. When I go visit them, no hairspray, no cologne. I have to remember that. I have to make sure that it's a morning visit, not an afternoon visit, in case I forget. So you need bath crystals or pearls, or none of that stuff. Maybe they're not a bath person. I'm not a bath person. If anybody gives me bath stuff, I'm like, oh, God, no. How do I get rid of this stuff? <laughs> OK. Bath lotion or oil. It matters. Do you all have preferences on this level? Yeah, you do. You're picky, aren't you? <laughs> Guess what? So are your clients. Bath, bar, or liquid soap. There are still some clients who like the bars. I can't imagine who they are. No. <laughs> Lufa. Okay. Robe or wrap. I'm a wrap all the way. I wouldn't want to. Oh, no, I'm a robe all the way, not a wrap. And I want it monogrammed. And you know what I really want? that goes to the floor instead of cutting me off right here? Uh, I'm 5'10", so I have that issue. I'm 5'7", I have that issue. I want your robe. It'll come down longer. <laughs> yes. Any bear? 
Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's just one of those things that drives me crazy. I think it must be for somebody who's 5'4". I'm not sure. Well done. Now, see, this is a gal that cares about her robe. Okay, this is important. I'll ha you know, I love it. I'll sign a waiver. Yeah. I'm a waiver girl, too. Okay, so. So kitchen remodels, nuts or no nuts. Do you know? How many of you know if your client is allergic to nuts? Let me see a show of hands. Okay. I got about four of you that know. The rest of you don't. Wow. That's kind of scary, don't you think? Dairy or almond milk? And sometimes it's not, yeah, you know everything. I know that. <laughs> and I talked to some of it. <laughs> um, soy or soy free? I'm soy free. I can't do soy. It just doesn't react very well. Gluten good or gluten free? And, you know, here's the thing. It's not always a medical condition. It's, sometimes it's just a plain old preference. So you don't want to second guess this. Kosher or non-kosher? Sweet or savory? I'm like a 50-50 on that one. Um, favorite foods, favorite restaurant. Why do you need to know their favorite restaurant? Gift card, yeah. Milestone celebration. Ooh, never thought of that. By the way, these are all wrapped up in project management for you. Okay? If your margins aren't high enough to incorporate this, we need to have a conversation about shifting your margins. Yes, ma'am. I got your answer. I got your answer coming up, okay? All right, so first you're going to create a master care list of, of first-class client care goodies that you want to keep on hand, or you can do them custom each time. It's your choice. Source, price point, lead time. Your intern or a VA can help you with this. And you apply the select personalized goodies to every project, both decorating and remodeling. I got your timelines coming up with that all broken down, okay? Um, and order as needed at the front of every project to surprise and delight. So you're not scrambling, oh, we missed the good week three and now we're five and oh no. Okay. <laughs> what if, what now? <laughs> well, then, then you need some therapy. <laughs> okay. Um, Radhika came out of a background in finance and accounting. She was the one that it took me nine months to convince her to let go of the bookkeeping, let go of the bookkeeping. She had a banner first year in business. She is a perfectionist. She wrestles with that one. And she has what I call the cocktail club, which is my back pocket accountability every single week. And she sends me what she's done, what she didn't get done, why she didn't get it done, what she's going to tackle the following week. challenges for that week. One challenge for the week, not 25, one. And I send back personalized strategy, celebrations. I love going down the list of what she's done and go, yes, perfect, excellent, awesome, yahoo. We all need a cheerleader, okay? And at the same time, I never beat anybody up. It's like, okay, so tell me why you didn't get it done. You know what? Delete this or delegate it. Let's get this off your list. You don't need to do this anymore. Okay, because I can see where you're getting buried in the weeds. Weeds are unhealthy in gardens, and they suck in design businesses. Okay? So it really is kind of like having me in your back pocket, except that I'm larger than that. <laughs> so the all-in-one tool, this is Vislo. I love Vislo. Vislo.com. Okay? And I'm going to share what the timelines look like. They do not look like that Excel spreadsheet, but it is a very pretty colors. I like the colors there, see? This is Vislo. Okay? I love Vislo. I am not paid by Vislo, by the way. There's no endorsement here, except that it is a very cool tool, a very simple tool. It gives me the pretty ribbon, okay? I like pretty tools. I don't like Excel spreadsheets. They make me nervous. And then I have to slide the thing back and forth to get all the information, and I'm just, oh, 
Okay? This is a pretty tool. This took me 10 minutes to put together. Does anybody think they could maybe at the front end of a project spare 10 minutes to put together a timeline? Yeah. Now, what I did was, you see the bold? The bold is what the client gets. That's all they get. They don't need to know countertop install and shower enclosure complete. Da, da, da. Your contractor gets everything except you drop out the client celebrations. So here I've got a champagne celebration for the client in week one. Contractor doesn't need to know about that. Okay. Demo bath, prepare for next steps. Gift card to client for spa day at week three. Now, you don't have to do a spa day. You can do a mani-pedi if you want. You could do a facial if you wanted to. Depends on how big this remodel is. Okay. Um, you could make this six months instead of six weeks, and you could have a much more detailed timeline. Then I've got gift basket for client at the end. Okay. Now, this is a six-week. Again, I like to work in very accelerated time frames. And I make sure no demo is done until every product is in and waiting and ready to go. OK? Because that's what will derail everything. Contractors love to do demo and then disappear for two, three, four, five weeks and hang you up. And I eliminate that opportunity by making sure that absolutely every single material is waiting and ready to go before demo's done. Okay? So I'll share another one with you. These are all in Vislo, okay? They have different, to, I like the wavy line, but I also the, it's called, I call it the ribbon line. And then I also like this one here. But again, I started down here at week nine. Start with the end in mind and work backwards, okay? This is all in there. All you're doing is typing in the text. It's so easy. Who's willing to use this? See a show of hands. Almost everybody in the room. Good. OK, so again, I start with the end, the big reveal, and I move backwards. And I've got provide a client with gift card. Um, I've got celebrate the launch there. And I've got, where did I put my wiggle room? My wiggle room's in here somewhere. I know I left wiggle room in here. I'm not sure exactly where I left it, but I did. Um, so again, the, the bold pieces, and I would probably change this a little bit to share with the client, because you don't want to give them too much detail. Don't give them too much detail. Keep it high level. Keep it high level. And if you, and if you every single week, without fail, on the same day and the same time, every week you send them an email. Hey. We're on track for that big reveal. Hey, so glad we met last week. Hey, bathrooms really look good. Hey, kitchens look incredible. Okay, try to keep them off site or out of the space. I've, I've put blankets up over doors. I've locked the door to the deck because I was doing a screen area and put blankets up over it so she couldn't see what I was doing. You do what you have to do. I know that on HGTV, they let them see it all the way through. We all know the stress that creates. Don't do that. Don't do that. If you can avoid it, OK? And here's one that's strictly for redesign and decorate, OK? So I've got the end in mind. Uh, where's my end in mind? Here we go. Include time for photography. Please get your photos before you turn a project over to your client. Once you turn the project over, you've got no control over it. And if you have to go back in, you got to plan on a full clean, a fluff, a spruce, uh, moving all their personal stuff out. It's a train wreck. So slide that photography in before you hand it back to them, really and truly. I cannot impress upon you that enough. Um, I didn't include celebrations in here, but I would have had a project kicked off celebration. I would have done a celebration, let's see, if I get eight weeks, around week four, and then we do something celebratory here beyond the big reveal, whether I do a gift basket, whether I send them out to dinner, or whatever I decide to do. Okay? But you have a list of them, and you'll get that in the tip sheet. Does that make sense to everybody? Has this been helpful? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Okay, so eliminating management by crisis. How many of you are basically spending more than 50% of your time putting out fires? Let me see a show of brave hands. Somebody's fire's going off right there. <laughs> okay, so I've, I've got some people who aren't telling the truth in this room because I know 
more of you putting out fires than, than who raise their hands. Keep the hurdles in perspective. If you will keep your head about you when things seem to be going wrong, when you want to just stress out and have a meltdown, you're like, I'm just, I'm just mm, going to have a meltdown. If you will keep your head about you, your wits about you, your clients will too. Well, what we do has a profound impact on their health, their wealth, and their relationships. It's not the cure for cancer. It's not solving world hunger. And it's not adding to literacy or any other major in the world. So for a client to have a drapery emergency, really? And some will say, oh, I'm having a party, and my drapes aren't in. I'm like, maybe you need some new friends, because if your friends <laughs> are judging you by your drapery, there's a problem here. We need to get the therapist in, <laughs> okay? If you will keep it in perspective, they will keep it in perspective, okay? Now, obviously, if there's a flood, if there's a fire, that's extenuating circumstances. That's not what I'm talking about. We've all had those clients that just raise our level of anxiety about a given project higher than it needs to be. That's giving away our power. You don't need to do that, okay? So keep hurdles up. Plan your time daily and weekly. When you plan it daily and weekly, your month is taken care of. Your quarter is taken care of. Your year unfolds in a much more well-planned, well-designed, relaxed, productive, and profitable manner. You let go of busyness and replace it with joy and delight. You look forward to every day. You're no longer dreading it going, oh my God, I've got this incredible list of to-dos. Because you've created that time block and you know those decisions. Now, there are going to be things that, that will upset a time block. There will be things like that, but you can minimize them. How many of you answer every phone call or every text with minutes of receiving it from your client? I see a show of hands. Okay, please stop. Please don't do that. You're not serving yourself by doing that. You truly are not. Um, you can put it in your letter of agreement that you will respond twice a day. You need to respond to your contractor generally a little bit more often because they're usually hair on fire, um, but not but not clients, okay? Keep track of the details, avoid going overboard. If you'll avoid going overboard, everything will work out fine for you. So Gretchen has been with me for three years now on accountability. She has her marketing planned nine to 12 months out. I mean, her e-zines done, her electronic newsletters done, her Facebook posts are done, her Instagram posts are ready to go, all queued up. Because when she goes to have her hair pinkified, she has pink hair, she spends the time, it's like three or four hour process, she spends the time doing marketing. She's so spot on with this, and she is without fail my most regular accountability designer. Every single Friday I hear from her. And it's always, got two new rave reviews this week, landed three more, and, and she does a lot in the same amount of time that everybody else is scrambling to do far less. Because she's so well organized, she time blocks, she timeline processes, and she's in the accountability club. So she has, like, actually, I think she's over 80 testimonials now. So you're going to get the slides as promised. You get the tip sheet, time mastery, if you put your card in the bag. And I also have two books I'm going to raffle off. These are my books. Yes, it is me on the cover. I think I'm still recognizable. I'm not sure. <laughs> but would you be from, oh, let me think here, 2006? Okay. I am a huge believer in celebrating your life each and every day. I do not believe you have to sacrifice yourself to your business. In fact, I think it's profoundly unhealthy. And the growing pains are hard. I get it. I really do. But it's important that you step into that CEO position and that you lay claim to the growth that you deserve by applying what I've taught you here. Now, the Cocktail Club, TCC is what I call it, is available today only in this live training. I don't share it any other time. 
If you miss it today, you can get it Sunday at Norwalk. That's your only other option, okay? It's a 30-day trial. It's online accountability. I send you an email. You reply to the four questions, and there's always a strategy and a case study, like a story in there. You send it back to me. I personally respond. Nobody else. I don't have any team responding for me. I will respond. Sometimes it's within two hours. Sometimes it takes me 24 to 48. And sometimes you're going to be late getting it back to me. That's fine. I'll still respond personally to every single one. I love doing this. It lights me up because I can support you if you'll allow me. Now, I have designers who've been on it for 9, 12 months, never sent me one on a Friday. I, I find that peculiar. I don't understand. Um, I guess they think this is going to work by osmosis. <laughs> it's way better. Just send it back. And you can say, Melissa, I, I feel so bad I didn't get enough done. And I'm going to come back to you with, hey, deep breath. Let's focus on what you did get done, not on what you didn't get done. Because I know that place of self-flagellation. Quack, 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 quack. It doesn't serve you. Okay? Um, it really doesn't. And it's $67 today only. I've got some help in the back of the room who's going to help with that. And it includes a one-on-one -on -one design practice diagnostic with me by phone or Zoom. I love Zoom. I prefer Zoom to Skype. So if you're game to go face-to-face, -face, you only have to be dressed from here up. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't stand up in the middle of the call, okay? <laughs> um, you know, we'll make that happen too because it's really, I want a chance to look inside your business and see what's going on so I can really, truly help you in a one-on-one. -on -one. You may all be in design, but you are all each unique individuals and your business is as unique as you are. And you have unique strengths, unique zones of genius, and I'll bet you, that there's some Kims in this room who love doing the elevations and the architectural details and can't stand doing the upholstery and the art and the accessories. And there's other people who are like, oh, elevations and architectural details, ew, which would be me, by the way. I love doing the decorative pieces. Now, 80% of my business is you today. That's my life right now. I've made that decision. I'm super comfortable with it. I love doing this. 20% of my life is actual design clients. I've turned down four projects in the last six months because they either weren't fits or I didn't have time. My coaching clients are my priority and business transformation is my focus. So in case you were curious, thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to share with you, since I have Goff in the room, and this is a surprise to me, didn't know I was going to do this. If you have specific questions about accountability or about my coaching, I'm going to ask you to ask Goff because he and I have been working together for, we're close to six months now? Longer? Nine months maybe? I've lost track. Okay. Okay. Um, and it has made an enormous difference. I mean, he has really stepped in from being the chief employee to being CEO to having a team that adores working with him, that gets the job done. You do accountability every single day, don't you, with the team? Yeah. And when we do our coaching sessions, they're all on. I coach the whole team. I'm perfectly happy to just one of you, but if you've got a team, bring them into this. Really make them a team. Let them see what your priorities are, what your focus is, what lights you up. And let them say, wait, Goff, Melissa said, it's not in your zone of genius. I got it. Because they do. They do. They do. It, yeah, it, it's giving up control. But actually, you know what? You wind up more in control because you wind up getting to be that visionary. And it really does. not In fact, we just talked about adding, he's in Southern Cal. Um, Orange County, and he's got one of his, his people recently had to relocate to Seattle because her husband moved. We've been trying not, we don't want her leaving completely. She's doing virtual work now, and in our last coaching session, I said, well, how come you don't? And, you know. It's about intention, okay? 
What do you want? You don't want the craziness, okay? You want a business that is rewarding, that rewards your life, that gives you time for your family and friends, that gives you time for that spa day once a week or once a month. Now, some of my clients think that I work too much, but you know what they don't understand is I work Sundays a lot because it's quiet. Every couple of weeks, I take off like a Wednesday and I go to my favorite place and I have lunch and I have a bee's knees. If I play it right, I get to have two of those. It's a cocktail. <laughs> and then I go have my mani-pedi and my nails done. It's important to me. It's on my personal care list. And I pretty much am out most of that day just taking care of me. Okay. When was the last time you really took care of you? Okay. I want you to think about that because, again, if you're not taking care of you, no one's going to be there to take care of your clients, your family, your friends, or anything else that's important to you. So I trust that you learned how to get more done in less time. Can we agree on that? Yeah? The three components of project management, what are they? Calendar it, then what? Communicate it, and complete it. Well done. How to include client celebrations. Is that, was that new to anybody here? I hope so. Yeah. Does that kind of excite you? Like, wow, I love giving presents. Yeah. You need to know at the front end of the project what your timeline is going to be and how large the project is and what you think an appropriate investment in that would be. And how you're billing, so I have a little bit of a hard time doing that, but usually if it's hourly, you know, you can slide in some extra hours to cover it. If it's project cost, you can do it that way. There's infinite number of ways to cover it in there. Um, and at some point, you may just get to a space where you say, you know what? I'm just going to gift that. That's just my gift to my client, period. I'm not going to worry about it. Because what you give does come back. That, that makes a big difference, too. So the almost free tool. Anybody here going to use Vislo? Yes. Awesome. Please do. I don't get anything out of that except a warm, fuzzy feeling, knowing that you're using it. I love warm, fuzzy feelings. I live for those. How to eliminate management by crisis. Is this going to stop some crisis in somebody's life? Yeah? OK. And then. If you want the opportunity, I would love to see you in this. We will not be starting today. Don't worry. We'll start next Friday. And at the same time, within 30 days, I can get you on my calendar, and we can do a one-on-one. -on -one. It's usually 45-minute minimum and often goes to an hour, okay? I want you to come with clarity around what your issues are so that I can dive in and be strategic in my guidance. And if there's something more you want to take from that, we can discuss that at the same time. I am here to serve and support your success because I want to see you continuing in this field and I want to see you continuing in a way that you're lit up on a daily basis. You're tuned in, turned on, engaged, and connected, and you love your business instead of going, oh, God, how many more years do I have to do this? Okay. Anybody have any questions? Anybody have any answers? Woo. Love answers. Thank you.